Hello, I'm Kristen Lee. Let's try this again. I always do better on like the second take or the third take. <laughs> so, um, welcome to my wrap up for March. A lot happened. A lot of it was emotional and mental and a lot of it was just stuff. Um, but to the new subscribers, hi, how are you? <laughs> I, uh, Thanks for hitting the subscri uh, subscribe button. Um, I, I'm glad you like the hauls and stuff like that. That's That was really cool to find new people. I, uh, yeah. I thought about starting it to let you know who I am and, and why I did what I did with my YouTube channel and everything like that. Because my content, like, I don't have a niche at all. I don't have any um, rhyme or reason to my channel. It's kind of chaotic. And uh, some of it's travel. Some of it's hauls because I love to shop. Some of it is um, family stuff. Some of it's just chat with me. So it's really what I'm feeling at the time or what I'm doing. So, if you want to stick around, <laughs> we'll go aboard. Um, I originally started doing my channel because I'm originally from upstate New York. And my, uh, my friends and family would ask me how California was because I moved here about five years ago. Well, four and a half. And, uh... And then the same thing when I would meet people from California, they wanted to know what upstate New York was like and what the differences were and had I gone here, had I gone there. So I use my channel to show things that I'm doing. Um, and I came out here to help with my little brother. There's 35 years difference and uh, he's becoming my little best friend and we you would not know that there was so many years between us sometimes when we argue but he's just he's my little dude and sometimes you'll see him in videos so that's cliff notes version of me and the big thing that happened this month was i turned 40 and i did not want to <laughs> at all i um i had a really hard time with it. I don't know what it was. I just fives and zeros for whatever my, my whole brain just goes, we should have been doing this, that, and the other thing by now. Um, and then the, the clock struck 12 and I was 40 and I, I was fine. I don't know what happened, but, um, leading up to it, I was just really anxious and just putting myself down and everything just because you play the comparison game and say, okay, well, this person is younger than me and this is what they've achieved. And this person's older than me and look at all the things that they've achieved. Or this person is my age and this is what they're doing with their life. But what I've come to realize is I don't know if I would have been happy in that version so it was it was tough and my friend emily from emily's life on wheels she was going through a hard time and but she booked me a birthday cameo from peter mon which is a vlogger that a group of us just absolutely adore so he gave me some words of advice and at the time i was just like what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, and I don't know how I feel about putting it on my video. Um, just cause it's kind of personal, but he basically said that 40 is basically a number and that my best years are on the way kind of thing. So it was, it was incredibly nice and it was an awesome birthday present. And then my friends came to visit and that was a surprise that they, because they're both teachers and um, 
East Coast and West Coast spring breaks and stuff are a little different. So I was, I was really happy to see them. And we, we did a lot considering they were only here for a couple of days. And um, I got, I, it was a shopping month. I did a lot of shopping, as you've seen. <laughs> and then what else did I do? I read, I read a lot. So this is what I read for the month. I read 13 books. Um, I'm trying to think. My three, my top three are Love Pamela, which is Pamela Anderson's um, autobiography that she just published, well, just got released in February, I think. Um, it was fantastic. I listened to the audio version and she narrates it and you, you find out things about her that maybe you wouldn't have thought about. So I, I just, I really love the book and uh, I, I love her as a person. I just find her quirky and I, I love her, the advocacy that she does with um, animals and just human rights and things like that, where a lot of people would look at her and not think that she was into the things that she's into. So that was three. Number two was Grady Hendrix, um, How to Sell a Haunted House. And that book, oh my goodness. So I went into it not knowing anything about it. I just was like, I love Grady Hendrix for his horror books and things like that. And then Peter picked it for his book club, Peter Mom. And I was like, okay, perfect. It gives me a reason to get this book. So I did. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm reading it and I was going into it thinking that it was going to be, oh gosh, it was going to be about a haunted house. Like there were going to be haunted people in it, but you find out that the mom and dad that had passed away, it's about a brother and sister that have to come together to sell their parents' house because their parents have passed on. And you find out that the mom was a puppeteer. So the house is like wall to wall puppets and dolls and like Punch and Judy puppets. So I don't particularly like them. I grew up with Puppet Master and Chucky and God, what was the other one? Poltergeist and you know, the creepy, if you don't take care of your dolls or whatever they're going, the Christmas toy. Do you remember the Christmas toy? The Christmas toy messed me up as a kid. Anyway, so <laughs> freaking witch doll thing that <laughs> all the toys are scared of. Anyway, so I, I'm like trying to get over my fear because it's not really a fear, but it was really a good book. And in the beginning of the book, I was team big sister. Like I thought the little brother was a leech and all these things. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he just wants the money from the house and he doesn't want to share and this, that, and the other thing. Then the sister does something that if you watch horror, you're like, why are you doing this? This is dumb. And she sleeps over the house and she already knows that the house is acting funny. And then what was the other thing that was there? There, there were like taxidermy squirrels or something. That scene. No, thanks. But anyway, so she sleeps over and the haunted house does the haunted house thing. Let me tell you, there was a scene with either a sewing needle or a sewing pin or whatever. It freaked me out enough where I slept with the lights on and I watched Golden Girls until I fell asleep. I, I'm like, I, I'm 40 years old and I'm like this, <laughs> freaking out. So, but it was a fantastic book. And then as you go through, because the book is... Um, the chapters are done in the stages of grief. So 
as you go through the stages of grief, you find out the brother's story. And it just, it was an awesome story and it got me thinking, you know, what am I going to do when that part of my life happens? Um, because a lot of my family is still back east. So it got conversation going with my family. It, it, who knew that a book was going to bring up the conversations that I needed? And ironically, that conversation also happened when my friends were here. So I think in the next five years, I'm going to look at buying some kind of property back east so that I can be able to float from California to the East Coast better. Um, ideally, I'd like a townhouse where I don't have to worry about the upkeep of outside or anything like that, but we'll see what happens. So, but yeah, I'm giving myself a five-year mark to work on my credit and finish my schooling and um, I want to get a remote job when I do get my certificate. So, who knew that a horror book would get all these thoughts? Because I just, I, as I was reading it, I thought of my Nana's house. And there's just so much there. And, like, there's this closet. I'm pretty sure we haven't touched it in about 12 years. And I have no idea what's in it. I have no idea. The last time we cleaned it out, we found a box. And inside the box, there were all these like shopping bags and inside the shopping bags were beanie babies that were still in their packaging so <laughs> it could be anything in there so that was number two and then number one was tied um with oh my gosh a good day for chardonnay i love dorinda jones as an author and I have yet to find any of her writing that I don't like. And this series, Sunny Vikram, is the heroine in the series. And she's just awesome. It's a great series. And I cannot wait for the hangover one that's supposed to come out this summer. Um, but it, the way that she writes things, like you laugh out loud, but you also cry at certain parts. She's really good at taking comedy and also giving you the humanity in a book. And it's a cozy mystery, but it's fantastic. So it was that. And then the other one was this one. That time I got drunk and saved a demon. Oh my gosh. So I finished it in a day and... It was, it's so funny. It's so funny. It, like, it's spicy. It's quirky. It, yeah. If you don't like the title, then it's not your kind of book. But if you like the title, it might be your book. But it's about this woman, Cinnamon, and she works on a spice farm. And she is walking home drunk after a festival and she stumbles upon a demon and decides that she's going to help him with his quest because it's either that or he's going to kill her family and it just there's some spicy stuff in here and it was just it was a fun ride so that was really good and oh honorable mentions um daisy jones and the six was really good i'm starting the um, I'm starting the TV show. So far, I like the TV show. I only did the first two episodes. Um, trying to think. I haven't really seen a lot of differences so far from the book. I guess it, 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 they aren't equal, but they never really are whenever they make an adaptation. So I don't know why people are still freaking out when things get taken out or whatever. What is up with this one hair? Anyway, um, but Daisy Jones, I, I like the way that they wrote it because it was written like a transcript for an interview and I just really enjoyed it. Oh my gosh, I'm at the 15 minute mark. Sorry. 
Um, and the other honorable mention was The Night Shift by Alex Finlay. Uh, he did great at taking the 90s blockbuster and being able to transition from um, the late 90s into now. And it's about a serial killer that kills in the 90s at a blockbuster and then there's a murder now so however many years that is um so yeah good month for reading i didn't watch a lot of movies i did finish the last of us i thought it was a fantastic show i don't know where they're gonna go with if, well i think they got signed on for season two but i don't know where they're gonna go with it um i started daisy jones in the six I think that's it. I didn't really get time to watch TV. So yeah, that was my month. And I'm probably going to stop this very soon because <laughs> if I make it go over so many minutes, it takes hours to upload. I don't know why. But um, oh, let's crush our goals because it's Sunday. I feel like I'm all over the place. And if I am, sorry. Oop. I baked all day today. Hey, come here. Come here, card. Okay. Bob Wiley. <laughs> Oh my god, it's from What About Bob? Um, it's the part, it's the part where he's doing baby steps. So when he's going to the elevator, he's going baby steps, baby steps, baby steps through the office, <laughs> baby steps to, out the door. It works. It works. All I have to do is take one little step at a time and I can do anything. And then he gets to the elevator and he screams. I love this. <laughs> um, I know I forgot things. Hmm. That's it. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Hope you guys had a great week and a great weekend. Um, thank you again to my friends that came out. Thank you to my Vlogarino friends for being awesome throughout the month. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.